without question for me, one of the true highlights of my professional life was having my first guest sing to me nightly on Broadway. She is a uh, two-time Tony Award winner. She won this year for a performance in Annie Get Your Gun. Please look at this. you have your own show because I love you on, when you're on other people's shows, when you're a guest. On, now you can be a guest on your own show. I'm, every, I'm a guest yay, every second. Friend. I'm a guest on my own show. And I'm so glad <laughs> that you've done well since I launched your career uh, on Broadway. Thank you very much. I wanted to say that actually, yes. You helped. I've been working ever since. You really have. It's Two times. We had, we had a ridiculous amount of time. We were in the show, The Goodbye Girl. I think you're started. sitting taller than me. I, oh, <laughs> you notice? Well, that's not. You know, Mickey Rooney, honey. I mean, you're what? Five, you know, what are you? What is I'm, your height? <laughs> well, I'm 5'2". Yeah, well, I'm 5'2 as well. But, but that's why I put my chair up. <laughs> but we had, we did this show for a year, right? About a year. About mm -hmm. a year. And uh, The Goodbye Girl. The Goodbye Girl. And we had an enormous amount of fun. It was a, it was a, it was a show of, uh, there were ups and downs on well, the road. Well, I mean, Marty had her so hysterical <laughs> in rehearsal. And I mean, where's Michael McGraw? I mean, he had us, without, we had no idea the show was in trouble because the show, we thought we had laugh after laugh yeah. after laugh because he was making us laugh during rehearsal every day. But we, you know, you try a show out of town and the, the one critic called us the Bye Bye Girl, which I think <laughs> <laughs> a little mean. Do they read? Yeah. <laughs> See, she doesn't read any reviews. She will not I read don't. one review. Why I is don't. that? Because do I want to read the Bye Bye Girl? <laughs> When I'm in a show and I have to go, go? No, I don't want I know. to know. And what I do is I say, I don't read one review, and then I'm in my room going, <laughs> because <laughs> the bye-bye girl, we're finished. Why did I read this? That's right, because you have to do it. You can never shake it. No, you have to do and, it. Uh, and, and, but we were on the road, and, and, and with Neil, when Neil Simon wrote The Goodbye Girl, and he's there every day, and he's getting a 400 lines every day. <laughs> and usually I would go out, and I would remember all the new lines and forget. <laughs> He used to make me laugh because, because he came prepared. The first day of rehearsal, he knew all his lines. He knew all his songs. He knew everything. He well, was I was always, green. I was desperate. He uh, loved. He was always prepared. And we were like flubbering and learning and blah, blah, blah. And finally, we're on the stage and we're doing the show in front of people. And he <laughs> That's true. Which makes me go hysterical. Yeah. Because he's our rock. And all of a sudden, he's like, then I don't know what else. I'm going to say, and then I, I have to like, <laughs> first I laugh, then I think back, what is his line, my line, then I get us right back on the right track. Yeah, after about five minutes. What happens is that, <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, I, and at least I can improvise, so I'm saying, you know, well, okay, I can, of course, no blank, just panic, heart beating, little rabbits frightened, and I say, uh, okay, so you, you just let me in that door. It's not fair that I'm out here in the cold, and then I open the door and she's completely hysterical. And I'm like laughing in <laughs> And I'm saying, face. oh, you may find that funny, sure, but I'm cold. <laughs> we really did have a remarkable time and to the point that she actually flew on her day off here to come out here, which I phoned you. I phoned her on the weekend. I said, you shouldn't be flying, Burnett. This is dumb. We'll, we'll uh, you know, and meanwhile, I'm thinking, what will we do if you don't come? But, but, you, but you would have done it. You, you, he does that. I mean, he does things like that. He flies at a moment's notice, does a show flies back, and I figured that it's all in the attitude. And yeah, I I, well, I never got sick. I just gave the sickness to others in the show, if you recall. He called me Typhoid Marty. <laughs> He's a carrier. 
<laughs> it was true. I read you got sick. It was in the paper. You got sick I was, uh, in the wings or something. Yes, I did. I was, uh, I come on stage and I say, I, actually, I got sick in the dressing room first. And I felt much better. Then, When you I get, thought, mean sick, you mean... I threw up. Yeah. I threw up. Annie, get your barf bag. You mean that? That's right. <laughs> and I felt great. I thought, okay, I can, I was through throwing up. I can go out there and I'll be fine. So yeah. I go out there and I say, a fellow down the road, Peace tells me I can do some business here. And he says, what you got? And I say, quails, ducks, grouses. And I guess the roadkill was getting to me. And I do, <laughs> but, uh, bunnies, whatever the hell, whatever, excuse me. Whatever I say, squirrels. And when I got to rabbits, I went, squirrels. And I went, and I walked off the stage. And the poor, poor Ron mm -hmm. Carroll. Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. going, and they're all looking at me like, why did you leave the stage? And I see a face the basket coming at me, thank God. <laughs> That I can... Because you can project. There's no question about it. <laughs> <laughs> I can. Okay, we'll be back with more. You know, I once saw Carol Channing with a nosebleed do all of Hello, Dolly. You know, you just have to, you know, the show must go on. We're going to be back with more Bernadette Peters in one second.